Hi, Confirmation families, it's Miss Adela, and I am, if you don't know me already, the director of the Brighton Regional Catholic Faith Formation Program, which encompasses the four parishes in the Brighton area, which is Our Lady of Lords, Our Lady Queen of Peace, St. Anne, St. Thomas More, and of course, we embrace everybody else that has come to us from the highways and the byways that, for whatever reason, are joining us this year, and we are glad to have all of you. Um, and many of you are preparing for confirmation. So I am here to help guide you and direct any traffic any way possible to make this as easy and simple as possible, starting with this video. So I know I've tried to communicate a few other ways to get everybody on board and to know what's going on, but it can get confusing and it can get bogged down with all the other things going on. So this is a video being sent directly to you if you're registered with the program to know what's going on exactly with confirmation, immediate preparation, and for year one and year two. So everything I'm gonna cover in this video is a reference video for you. So keep it on hand. If you ever have questions, don't remember what I've said, you can just watch the video again, say, what did you say about that? And it'll pop up and you can just watch it and you'll have everything you need right here. Okay. All right. So first and foremost, I know that some people come from other parts of the world. So confirmation is handled differently from diocese to diocese. Um, and certainly from this part of the world to the next part of the world, state to state, you know, all over the place. If you come from somewhere where it is handled entirely differently and you're a little bit lost as to how we do it and this video for whatever reason doesn't make any sense to you, just email me and let me know. I will work with you wherever you're at um, because I am well aware of that. I know that there's lots of different ways people handle um, confirmation. So um, I will take those on a case by case basis. But for this video purpose, I am just gonna talk about how we do it here in Rochester and what I want you to know for this program going forward, okay? So obviously confirmation is a two year process. That is a two academic year process. Back in the day, before pandemic or otherwise, it used to be that grade eight was year one, grade nine was year two. Now, we know that that doesn't pertain to everybody. So occasionally, I forget and say grade eight, year one, grade nine, year two. Um, I might forget and call you grade eight if you're in year one or, or grade nine, but that's what I mean, year one, year two, all right? Whatever grade you're in, if you're in the first year of your confirmation process, you are in year one. If you did year one already and you're ready to do year two, you're in year two. Um, don't let me, if I slip up and say grade eight and nine, don't let me throw you off. That just means old habits die hard and I forget sometimes when I'm talking about it, okay? So year one students, what does this mean for you? So we're gonna make two distinctions. If you are in your first year of confirmation and you are in public school, or a private school that's not Catholic, okay? Because I know I have a lot of you too. Anybody that's not in a Catholic school, you need for confirmation to be attending the bi-weekly, the every other week Sunday night class and attend the year one retreat, which on November 19th and you need to turn in two community service reflection forms by April 23rd okay that's it that's all you have to do go to class go to the retreat turn in two community service reflection forms based on two community service projects that you participate in throughout the year Those community service projects can be done with us, with the school, 
in the community. If they are done with the school or community, I just ask that you touch base with me, write me an email and say, does this fit what we're learning? Because you might not even know yet what we're learning about in, in class to know that it ties into what we're learning. So just shoot me a little email and say, this is what we're doing, what do you think? And I might guide you and say, yeah, you know, when you do your reflection, here's what I'd like you to think about when you're writing about that, you know, for your reflection form. Now you will get reflection forms at your retreat, but they will be available to you in paper form and electronic form after that retreat, definitely November 27th and beyond, okay? So that's it for year one if you're public or non-Catholic school, right? If you are in Catholic school, you don't need the faith formation piece because it's already a part of your academic curriculum. So you don't need to be there on Sunday nights. You're welcome to be there if you want to be because we'd love to see your beautiful faces, but we know your time is precious and we don't want you to have to worry about that. You're already getting that education as a part of your academic curriculum in school during the day. Um, but you are invited to come to any community event we have, any of our youth ministry and get to know you programs that we have on Sunday night, that first half hour, if you want to come hang out with us. Anybody can come to that that's uh, grade 6 through 12 that wants to do that. Um, but as far as faith formation and the breakout of class, you do not have to do that. Okay. But what you do have to do is come to the retreat. So if you're in year one and you're in Catholic school, you do have to come to the retreat on November 19th. And you also have to do two community service reflection forms based on two community service projects that you've worked on. So that can be through anything through your school would more than likely fit what we're looking for. Because your school is picking those things based on your academic curriculum which is what our faith formation curriculum is based on. So that's why I, I don't worry about those projects. But if when in doubt, give me an email and we'll, we'll discuss that with you, okay? Um, so that's it for year one. That's all you need to focus on. So that year one retreat on November 19th, my friends, is going to be at Our Lady Queen of Peace from 10 o'clock a.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. We will serve lunch, it'll be pizza lunch. There will be drinks, there will be chips, there will be breaks. We will have a presenter. We will talk about prayer, that will be the focus of that. We'll be talking about why making your confirmation is important, what it is, what to be looking for. Um, like I said, different types of prayer, different ways to approach God in prayer. Um, just, you know, making you aware, students aware, of what to be looking for over the next, you know, this two-year journey that you're on. Then the community service reflection forms, like I said, you will get those in paper form. And those are all due, those community service reflections are due April 23rd. So if you are in Catholic school, you would be either emailing them to me or mailing them to me or sending them, scan them, I don't know, whatever. I just would need them by April 23rd. Or you can send them in. Uh, drop them off at the parish office, drop them off at mass, put them in an envelope, put my name on them, jump them right in the collection basket. They will get to me because I'm usually here when they do the collection. So <laughs> drop them in there, put my name on it. Everywhere you drop it in, they will get to me because I work everywhere. So they'll know where to find me. Okay. Okay. That's year one. You guys are all set. If you have any questions, year one people, let me know. Year two, here we go. Year two confirmation students. If you are in public school or private school that is not Catholic, same thing. You need to attend the faith formation every other week where you attend class. And I also forgot to mention, also that includes the home study, okay? The home study as well. 
I need homework and home study for those classes or you attend those classes and in addition to that faith formation you also come to the year two retreat you will also turn in the packet that I'm going to talk about in a moment you will also have a confirmation interview and then you will be making your confirmation all right, so that's everything that's going to be for you guys this year. So again, public school or non-Catholic private school students or home study students, you need to attend or give me homework for all of the classes that we have every other week on the Sunday evening classes. Attend the retreat. Turn in the packet that will be due on March 11th. Come to the March 11th retreat, that is required. Then you'll sign up for your confirmation interview and you'll be ready to make your confirmation. If you're in Catholic school, here we go. Your academic piece is already part of your, excuse me, your faith formation piece is already part of your academic curriculum. So you only need the immediate preparation in the retreat, which is March 11th. You need to turn in the packet, which will be sent home for you to start filling out on November 27th, okay? That packet of information. And then you will be turning that all in when you come to the retreat. Then you'll sign up for your confirmation interview and then we go to confirmation. Now, the packet will come out on November 27th because I need time to talk to all of the students that are in the formation program and in the home study classes to talk to them about what is gonna be in the packet and what they need to do. And I'm gonna briefly talk about that here just to parents give you a heads up for what is coming home so that you can be thinking about how to help your students fill that out. Um, but all of that will be due on March 11th. Seems like a far away you know, time, but it's really not. Can it be turned in sooner? Yes. If you get it all done and you don't wanna think about it anymore, mail it in. Be more than happy to have it. Um, but if you wanna just have it in hand and turn it in at the retreat, I'm okay with that too. Whatever works best for your organizational methods is fine, but I have to have it by March 11th because I have to turn in names to the diocese for name tags. We have to turn in all kinds of stuff to get certificates done. We have to do a lot of work before the actual confirmation happens, okay? All right, so at the confirmation year two retreat, that will be March 11th and that will be at Our Lady Queen of Peace. That is not gonna be at St. Anne's. There was, a, there was an early, early, early on schedule that went out that it was gonna be St. Anne's, but we had a conflict. So now we've moved that over to, to Our Lady Queen of Peace. Um, so we will be having it that day from uh, 10 to three, the same time frame as the other one. But at the end of that one, we will have confession. We always do confession before receiving a sacrament. So do plan on that. We strongly encourage that. We will talk about that at the retreat, um, but students will be going to confession and then they'll be all ready for confirmation as soon as it happens, okay? Um, all right, do we know the date of confirmation yet? No, the bishop sets the date probably sometime in the next couple of weeks. Um, we will find out, we generally find out like around January, Every now and then it's a little earlier than that. Um, I know they did ask us for our numbers so that we could figure out who we're gonna be with. So I know they're in the process of arranging that. So as soon as I know, I let you guys know so that you can plan around that. What happens if you can't make the date for that confirmation? You'd have to join another group if there's room. If they have room to squeeze you into another confirmation somewhere, they will. Um, another question I've had, does a confirmation have to happen uh, with a bishop? Yes. The bishop does them at a cathedral. 
Um, there are extreme circumstances where a bishop will give dispensation for certain circumstances. We are not one of those. We don't, we don't qualify for that at the moment. So it's not an option for us to have private confirmations. <laughs> um, so no, that, that's the short answer for right now. Um, so we just join whatever groups are going out there. So, you know, if you, you know, let's say you've booked a, a trip to Disney for some reason or wherever, and all of a sudden the bishop says, oh, that's the week we're, we're having it. Um, that's fine. If you can't make that particular confirmation, um, you would just join another, another group. So maybe, you know, I don't know, a Ronda Coy group, you know, they're all making their confirmation on a certain day. We'll see if we can squeeze you into their group. Um, it just would mean you wouldn't be making it with our parishes, that's all. Now, if you're really in that situation and you really want to make it with your parish, you'd have to wait till the following year. And that would be all we could do. Okay? So, whatever works. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And like I said, as soon as he lets me know, or the office of the bishop lets us know, then we um, we send it out to you and get the ball rolling. All right, so what's in the packet? The big packet. Really not that much. It's not as impressive as it sounds, um, but it is necessary. So the first page of the packet will describe everything in detail about confirmation and all the things that we're going to talk about shortly. Um, the first being picking a sponsor. So it describes what the church says about who can be a sponsor, who can qualify for that, and why. Um, and yes, there are very firm rules about who can be a sponsor for a child. So obviously, you want someone who's a good example a Catholic example. Um, so it needs to be a baptized, confirmed, practicing Catholic. Now, could it be a sibling? Yes. Could it be a grandparent? Yes. Can it be a parent? No. They ask that it's either a grandparent, a godparent, or somebody else. Now, parents can be what they call a proxy sponsor. So, um, a lot of this will be explained in the packet, but there's reasons for this. Um, but a parent can fill in for, let's say you have a grandparent that wants to attend, but maybe they're not feeling well, or they're in the nursing home, or they uh, live out of state, or something of that nature, and they just can't make it to the confirmation itself. Then a parent can fill in for the ceremony but they are not listed in the registry as your sponsor, as the child sponsor. So the more important point of this is you wanna have, so why I could get into the, the canon law and the, or the liturgical law of all this stuff. Here's, here's the thing, right? Parents, we are our children's first catechists, we're their support, we are their their cheerleaders, we're there for them, right? That's our job, our role, our calling. We want through the confirmation process to build a network of more people that can do that for us. That can also be other people they can talk to, other people that can role model that behavior, other people that can also, so they're part of our team too in that sense, right? We want them also modeling those Christian behaviors that we want our children to learn and the Catholic morals and values that we want them to learn. So we're picking people, other people that can help us to do that. We already know that we're trying to do that. So we want other people as well. These should be people that your child already is, is looking toward. Is it ideal if it's their, their godparent? Yeah, that's great. Does it have to be? No. Um, not all grandparents are created equal. Not all of them are living around the corner. So obviously if there is somebody, even in the church, you know, maybe they've been uh, going to church week after week and they really get along with somebody that they see every week there at church and that person is just a great example to them. That's, that's perfect. That's somebody that you want as a sponsor for your child. Somebody that when they graduate 
and move on out into the real world, so to speak, in one form or the other, whatever that is, that if they run into a, a question of faith, morality, or anything, that they can turn to that person and get another opinion, another guidance of how to make that moral decision for themselves. So that's who we want them to pick as a sponsor. Now, I've heard it all. I, I have over the years that people say, well, you know, this person isn't Catholic, but they're a really great person. Great. It's great to have them in your life, but you really can't have them as a sponsor for a Catholic <laughs> sacrament if they're not Catholic. Um, they can be a best friend, a soulmate, another guidance, uh, another moral guide. There's nothing wrong with that, but they can't, the church isn't going to allow it. And I don't say no because I'm being a jerk. I say no because that's the rule of the Catholic Church, and I don't have authority to change that. Saint name. And that is a tradition of the church. Um, it's important in that same vein of finding a spiritual guide of someone who is a good example that the church has said is a good example or is seen as a saint um, by the church has been given that title um, that exemplifies the virtues and the moral integrity that they want to also emulate so that takes a little bit of research and sometimes you know sometimes kids are like oh i just want the guy that's the patron saint of sports i just want the lady that's the doctor of the church you know and all of those can be good reasons too but i just like to ask the kids to go a little bit further but what does that mean to you you know it's one thing that you know saint Teresa was a doctor of the church but why do you care about that what does that mean to you how does it tie to you? And are you going to draw strength from that example, right? Same thing with sports. You know, it's great that you like this saint because they're the patron saint of sports, but how how do you engage that? How do you feel about that? Why does that matter to you? Um, and so that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to identify the virtues and the values that our kids are, are going to try to emulate and also try to um, take on as they make their confirmation. And then, of course, the community service reflection forms very easy. Those are going to be community service projects that they get involved in. I offer lots of those opportunities in the newsletter, always. Um, and I'm always trying to um, think outside the box, trying to give people things that are different and, you know, not so much easy, but that are easier because I know with the pandemic and things that were happening and now things are starting to open starting to open up again although i know we have a whole host of other things that we're dealing with now but uh, we're always looking to try to you know find new ways to serve so be looking for those in the newsletter um like i said i i sometimes even come up with them even in class and say hey who wants to do this this could be a great community service project when I do the videos in the weekly newsletters, um, those of you that watch those videos, I mention them a lot in the video. If you're really, if your student is like, I have no idea what to do, and I haven't paid attention to the newsletter, or I've got too many things going on, here's what I like, tell me what I can do. I'll have conversations about community service all day long. I know lots of people that need help in lots of different areas, so never feel stuck. Email me and let's talk. So, okay, my friends, I hope that answers a lot of your questions. Um, and again, the Sacrament of Confirmation, when it happens, is back in the cathedral, Sacred Heart Cathedral. That's where we'll have it. Hopefully this year I won't have COVID. Um, that's what happened to me last year. It was not fun. Um, so hopefully we'll all be there for confirmation this year for my year two folks. Um, and as soon as we know, we will let you know so that you can plan accordingly. Um, and if you cannot make retreats, that's the other thing I need to know as soon as you know. Um, depending on how many people tell me they can't make a retreat will determine whether we need you to join another group or if we need to plan some sort of secondary retreat. If 12 of you tell me we can't make it because the school's having something, um, then obviously I have to plan a secondary retreat. If it's one or two of you, I might have to have you join another group somewhere. So that's what I'm looking at. So just let me know what 
what is happening for you, um, send me an email. Now that you're getting this video, send me those emails in response to this video to let me know that you're not going to be at this, this retreat or that retreat or whatever the case may be so that I can start planning now for what we need to do to cover that. Okay. Now I might email you back and say, okay, give me another week or two till I see how many people this really affects. Because remember, this is, we don't have a lot of time and staff to re reinvent the wheel either. So I'm, I'm trying to minimize how much extra stuff we plan. So if there's things already happen other places, we're going to have you just join them. So um, let me know who you are, send me an email and let's, we'll figure things out. Okay. Hopefully that'll be helpful. Okay, I hope this video helped. Um, if you have any further questions, if something I said still isn't clear, please let me know what, what's lingering out there that I haven't addressed, and I will definitely try to nail that down for you. Um, but hopefully this helps. So again, you'll see attached um, the schedule. Okay, look that over. It's pretty much everything I just talked about here. Um, and if you have any questions beyond that, let me know. All right. If not, year one students, I'll see you on uh, November 19th. And year two students, if not sooner, I will see you on March 11th. And everybody will have paperwork and packets definitely by November 27th. Those will be coming home not only in class, but they'll be coming home in the mail and then attached electronically to the newsletter after that. Okay. All right, everyone. Take care and God bless. Have a great week.